Charleston, South Carolina for an evening of college basketball with some Tigers and Bulldogs inside Little John Coliseum. You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Our matchup tonight is the South Carolina State Bulldogs on the road to take on the Clemson Tigers. 14th all-time meeting and the Tigers have won the last seven in the series between the teams. One of the best players and most exciting in all of the ACC on display tonight in Jerron Wilson game for the Tigers. Well, a first-team all ACC choice. Does it on both ends. An excellent defender, defending one through five, and so versatile offensively. Can score in the paint, knock it down from distance. A mismatch problem for the opposition each contest as he's able to attack off the bounce. Ninth best in the ACC as we play in mid-December for the graduate student from Alpharetta, Georgia. Also averages over five rebounds per game for the Tigers. In beautiful, refurbished Little John Coliseum, ready to tip. Tigers in the orange and white, South Carolina State in the blue, and the Tigers control the opening tip. The Bulldogs starting out in a little man-to-man -man defense. Must do the job of keeping the ball in front of them. And most importantly, when the shot goes up, five guys boxing out to secure a defensive rebound. Tom Wormy, Jason Capel with you. City Jete has the first bucket. And there's the versatility of Jerron Blossom game. When he touches the ball, all eyes are on him. Nice cut to the front of the rim by Jete for an easy two. South Carolina State is 2-7 and seven on the season. 0-6 oh away from Orangeburg, South Carolina. About 37 miles southeast of Columbia, South Carolina. The baseline jumper too strong from Riley. Grantham has to give it up, Holmes, and now they swing it around. Inside, back and down, Blossom game. Not this time. Bulldogs coming off a loss Saturday at Texas A&M, 83-76. to Traveling violation, that's against Kiner. Well, in the contest against Texas A&M, great showing by the Bulldogs. And one of the biggest reasons, only eight turnovers. Knockdown shots, but playing on the road in a tough environment, you must do the job of taking care of the basketball. Already their first T.O. of the day. Bulldogs did make 12 of 23 three-point attempts. 52% of that game on the road against the Aggies. And I think we're going to see a lot of change in defenses. We've seen the man-to-man, -man, but now the Bulldogs fall back into a zone. And Shelton Mitchell, three starts on the year coming off an injury. A welcome sign seeing him knocking down shots from distance for the Tigers. He is four of eight on the season from beyond the arc for the Clemson Tigers. He's a Vanderbilt transfer, a lefty, a guy that excels going off the bounce with his size, a great facilitator, a welcome addition for the Tigers. Shot clock is at five, Mortimer spinning, trying to give it up. It's off the fingertips of Kynard and back to the Tigers. Well, Brad Barnell teams are known for their stingy defense. There are simply no driving lines. Tigers plugging the holes, forcing the Bulldogs to start their offense out of scoring areas. Clemson is 6-2 on the season, 5-0 at home at Little John Coliseum. Mitchell with the entry before Blossom game could advance it to the rim. A foul against the Bulldogs. That looked like Riley picked it up. Well, you can see the game plan from the onset here. Clemson, the bigger, stronger team up front, trying to get that ball inside to Jerron Blossom game to use his elite athleticism in the paint. Tigers last played on Saturday right here at Little John Coliseum. Beat Mercer 90-47. to Connected on 13 threes. A season high for makes from long distance. And Blossom game is going to bend that rim for the Tigers. Well, we've seen them facilitate. We've seen them catch the ball two feet in the paint and elevate up high. And now we see that elite athleticism I'm talking about. Five of their points have come off turnovers. Tigers doing an excellent job defending and then turning those mishaps by the Bulldogs into points. 
South Carolina State trying to snap a two game losing streak advancing all the way to the rim up and in and the drive from Mortimer and Tom if the defense is going to extend that far out you must put your head down and attack Shelton Mitchell misses a floater and the Bulldogs are on the run Riley mid-range blossom game the rebound Rantham turns around, comes up short, gets it back. Fed it inside and a foul, and Blossom game has earned a couple of free throws. Kynard has the foul for South Carolina State. Well, South Carolina State is playing hard, but when you're an undersized team and you don't have the size and athleticism of a Clemson's Tiger ball club, you must do the job of getting those 50-50 plays. And when you look at South Carolina State, Coach Murray Garvin, the 2016 MEAC Coach of the Year. This team is picked second in the MEAC this season. Lost in the semifinals a year ago in their conference tournament. They have high aspirations to possibly represent the MEAC in the NCAA tournament this year. With Blossom game starting tonight, that it is as his 101st start in a Clemson uniform. At 16 points in the win against Mercer going to be a hell ball situation the arrow will favor the Bulldogs the only issue for Blossom game in that game against Mercer couldn't connect on the three ball he was 0 for 4 although the game was well in hand a couple of players now diving to the court another hell ball is Blossom game trying to corral it Eves was also there, but this time it'll be Clemson basketball. But Jerron Blossom game, the first team all ACC pick, is showing his strength inside. John Coliseum, where the home team has an 8-2 to two lead. Tigers leading the Bulldogs in the first half. Tom and Jason with you courtside. And a lot of folks who are coming to the game tonight and will come to games during the course of this season, happy that Jerron Blossom game came back to play another year for the Tigers. We've already seen him put a lot of skills on display in this game. Well, the person happiest is Brad Burnell because he got his best player back. A first-team All-ACC selection, one of the most versatile players in college basketball. Just under 19 points a game, six rebounds. Does a little bit of everything for this team. Already in this contest, three points, a rebound, a steal. And he's so tough to match up with. Declared for the NBA draft. Worked out for about eight teams. And just felt the need to come back. And when you look at a kid who's already a graduate, one of the top players in the ACC, and he has his mindset on leading this Tigers team to the NCAA tournament, you have to tip your hat to a kid who understands the process of getting better and chasing his dreams. He is on his way to scoring 1,300 career points, 667 career rebounds, and also he has that degree in sociology that he earned over the summer. A lot of good symmetry this season for the Tigers. The refurbishment of this arena and the return of Duran Blossom game. Jete on the offensive glass. Right down the lane, and that one will pop out, but followed. Rantham. Well, City Jete doing an excellent job getting an extra possession. And then we see the pocket pass to a slice and graph into the basket. Three-pointer is good for the Bulldogs, Eric Eves, the senior. Eric Eves, a preseason first-team MEAC selection. A guy no stranger to putting up big points against quality competition. Last contest against Texas A&M, 23 on the road. He's a big-time scorer for the Bulldogs. Straight away from Mitchell. Angular rebound into the corner and Eves. Stevens decides against that three-point attempt. Tigers up by five. On a contest like this, your offense has to help your defense. You can't take quick, bad shots leading to easy 
run out for the Tigers. Five on the shot clock. The Bulldogs have to get going. Stevens was doubled. Gave it up. Riley with the shot. Never did hit the rim, and it's a shot clock violation against the Bulldogs. Well, that's not all bad, Tom, because you didn't turn it over. It's not a live ball where the Tigers can get it out and go. Did a nice job moving the ball around. Just have to understand the time on the clock and when to get downhill to try to attack. Holmes comes out. DeVoe has come into the game along with Marquise Reed. From the wing for three. Jete had a chance at it off of the miss there from DeVoe, but a foul. Stevens is going to pick it up for South Carolina State. But South Carolina State has to do the job rebounding as a team. City Jete so much bigger, stronger inside, but you must do it with your body, with your hips. Get two hands in the back, the official's going to pull the whistle each time. Mitchell the entry. Blossom game trying to slice to the rim, and there was contact. And that's what Shelton Mitchell brings to this ball club. He's a guy his size at the point guard position. He can see over the opposition. Nice pocket pass to the sweet spot in that 2-3 zone. And when Blossom game gets it two feet in the lane, there's not much you can do but foul him. Steps to the line, knocks down the first. 69% of the season. They assess that foul to Fields, number five in blue. Double figures in every game this season for the Tigers so far. Janai Rayner Powell is into the game number 11 in blue. And Tom, look how far the Bulldogs are starting their offense. They must do a better job getting the ball, catching the ball in a scoring area. So now they're not going against a short shot clock. Clock is down to six. Stolen away. Reed comes up with it for the Tigers. Double teamed at the rim as Mitchell was driving. Fields has picked up his second. But Sheldon Mitchell so crafty. He's not going to wow you with his athleticism. He's not a great outside shooter. He understands pace, and he uses his size to his advantage. At the point guard position, he's something that the Tigers did not have last year. He can make guys better, get the big guys inside easy opportunities, and he steps to the line and knocks down the first of two. Grantham comes back into the game. Blossom game will get a breather. He will leave the game with five points. He has a rebound and an assist to his credit. So Mitchell comes out, the sophomore guard from Waxhaw, North Carolina. He's now 9 of 11 this season from the free throw line. Eve's trying to maneuver. Reed picks up the personal. And Tom, that's what you have to do. This is the first time the Bulldogs have simply taken that handoff, dropped the inside, inside shoulder, and attacked downhill. The defense can't put their hands on you without a foul being called. The Bulldogs have to do a better job of attacking. You can't just move the ball around the horn. At some point, you must start attacking the gaps of the Tiger defense. Brad Brownell is in his seventh season as the Clemson head coach. Just trying to clear up some substitutions at the scorer's table. 113 wins as the Tiger head coach. 280 for his career. 15th overall as a college head coach. First year he took over this program, Jason. Right to the NCAA tournament. They're trying to return for the first time since 2011. Well, this is the best team that he's had since that time. When you look at the leadership they have and Javon Blossom game and... Again, Dante Gretham, an another versatile wing that can allow you to play big or small. And talk about Shelton Mitchell. And Sunday, they're going to get the transfer from Texas A&M. Elijah Thomas, he becomes eligible. 6'9", lefty inside. 
a prolific scorer in the paint. He's going to be the missing piece of someone that can score the ball in the paint and create easy opportunities inside as well as protect the rim for the Tigers. So we're being told an administrative foul being assessed to South Carolina State. Number 35, Apple White, was not on the initial scorebook. So an administrative foul against South Carolina State, trailing 14 to 5. Eves pulls up. That's a three. Eric Eves. And he has to be the guy unafraid. Eric Eves is a proven scorer in any gymnasium across the country. Steps in off the bounce with one thing in mind, letting it fly, and he knocks down a big three-pointer. Two for two from long distance for Eves. Inside the Jete, and he makes no mistake. Well, the zone did a nice job there for a few seconds, but South Carolina State has to understand their rotations. You can't shift the zone with the ball fake, giving up an easy opportunity inside. Eves lost the handle. Whistle halts play. First on DeVoe. Number 10 in white. South Carolina State must continue to put pressure on this Tiger defense. I love the fact now they're coming out of the dribble weave handoff and they're beginning to attack downhill. Put the onus on the officials to make the call. 50% shooting so far for the Bulldogs as we close in on the 12 minute mark. Eves, difficult shot, the turnaround won't go and Jate has the clearance. But Jate doing an excellent job limiting the Bulldogs to one shot. And when the big man runs, you have to feed him. Jatay's showing he can not only rebound the basketball, but he's hungry to score in the paint as well. He calls a foul. Kynard picks up his second personal. There's the contact as Jate was hustling back down the court after getting the rebound at the other end. Well, big guys are taught. You run rim to rim. There's a line down in the center of the court in each practice session where the big guys are taught run front of the rim to the front of the rim. And if you're open, the guards are going to get you the basketball. The Tigers showed just that in that last possession. Chute to the bench with three rebounds. That one tipped out of bounds towards the South Carolina State bench. And it will be Bulldog basketball. It is an eight-point lead for Jerron Blossom game and the Tigers. Well, last year, Brad Brownell's team went 17-14. 16 and 15. You see the records for Coach Brownell. An NIT semifinal, though, 2014. And then last year, that was not good enough to get into the postseason for Coach Brownell. Well, it's a team that did an excellent job starting the season, taking care of the whole court. They must do the job of winning games on the road within the ACC. We understand even not being here with the renovations of little john coliseum last season they knocked off duke at home miami louisville in the same week all teams that were at the time in the top 10 in the country this is a veteran team a versatile team a better offensive team than coach Brownell's had in some time this is the year i think the tigers can turn the page and possibly compete for a spot in the ncaa tournament yeah the wins against duke and miami in that string they were both top 10 teams. First time since 1976 that Clemson had done that. And as Jason mentioned, they strung together five in a row in the ACC. Tigers started three of four. Since then, two of nine from the floor. Another miss. The zone defense from the Bulldogs has forced many contested jump shots. And Again, if you're South Carolina State, you must take care of the basketball, especially on the road, the fifth turnover of the day. Straight away, Blossom game. No doubt about it. Blossom game. Blossom game was a 50, 45, 75% guy last year. Hasn't shot it from three as well this season. Only four of 27 now, but... If you let a guy walk into a trail three-point shot, he's going to gain that confidence really quickly. Hands and feet ready, let it fly. Bulldogs call a timeout. 12 points off for turnovers in the first half. 
for the Clemson Tigers, culminating with that three-pointer from Jerron Blossom game. And as you said, Jason, he'd only made three on 25 attempts this season prior to the start of the game tonight. Well, that just goes to show, and we have to talk about the season he had last year when you shoot 50% from the field, 45 from three, and 75 from the line. That's a guy who has the ability to make shots, and he's doing just that here in this first half. 9-3 run for the Tigers, the largest lead of the first half. Blossom game fought his way back from a broken leg in 2013 where he redshirted. But this year will be one of the players to watch in the ACC. There's a wide open Bulldog underneath, and it's Greg Mortimer. Well, great execution out of a timeout. A little continuity action, and Tigers fell asleep. Mortimer found himself cutting to the hoop wide open, able to finish uncontested at the rim. Holmes. Three-pointer, DeVoe misses. Awesome game came over the top, but the Bulldogs race it up the court. Grantham came back to block that shot from Rainer Powell. Well, that's okay if you're South Carolina State. You want to push, you want to attack. I love the intentions of Rainer Powell getting to the hoop, putting pressure on a defense that wasn't set yet. Dante Grantham just makes an excellent play, and Gabe DeVoe on the heels of that makes another excellent play. And even better, going uptown. Javon Blossom game throws it home. This Bulldogs team made it to the MEAC tournament championship game last year, losing to Hampton. 81 to 69 after beating Coppin State and Norfolk State. Little shot on the baseline is good for James Richardson. Good attack by J.J. Richardson again. If you're going to be pressured, you have to attack off the bounce. Baseline pull up, knocks it down. Holmes for three. This Clemson offense is finding the groove here. See the transition baskets now. Great ball moving around the horn, and Avery Holmes may be the best three-point shooter on this team. Up and under, fancy move. Greg Mortimer slicing through that Tiger defense. Big-time move by Mortimer. Another three, and this time it's Dante Grantham for the Tigers. If you're South Carolina State, you can't trade baskets. At some point, whether it's man or zone, you have to sit down, spread out, and be ready to move your feet to defend. Attempted tip was missed and then a foul called as Applewhite was working on the glass for the Bulldogs. You can see the offensive potential for this South Carolina State ball club. Guys capable of making shots from distance. Applewhite doing the job, understanding his man went to contest that shot. Slides right behind the defense, unimpeded. Offensive rebound, foul, chance for two at the line. Freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville, North Carolina has produced some pretty good athletes. <laughs> pretty pretty good ball players. We have one in the ACC right now, Dennis Smith Jr. North Carolina State, one of the most exciting players in all of college basketball. Free throw attempts number 11 and 12 on the season for Damani Applewhite. And though Clemson seems to be in firm control of this game, here's South Carolina State. You're pleased. This is an 11-point ball game against a very strong team on the road. Tigers have won seven in a row in this series as they meet for the 14th time. Blossom game has to kick it out. Holmes could not use the glass effectively. Jete grabs it. Shot clock down to two. Blossom game tried to tip that miss up and in unsuccessfully. 
That was a great defensive possession for South Carolina State. Scouting report on Avery Holmes. He's a shooter. You push him off the three-point line, force him to drive and finish in the lane. Nice job defensively. Putting on the brakes and scoring. J.J. Richardson. And when you get stops, that breeds confidence in your team. The Bulldogs right now showing confidence on the road. Nine-point ball game. Foul against the Bulldogs. Applewhite picks up his first. The Clemson Tigers, early nine-point lead. A big reason, Jerron Blossom game. The pass from Gabe DeVoe, uptown. Slamming home. Saturday on ESPN, Old Big East rivals square off at the Carrier Dome. It's Georgetown and Syracuse at noon Eastern in a Holiday Hoops matchup presented by Zales. They've met 91 times all the way back to the late 1920s. The Orange lead the series 49-42. And also, Jason, there will be a tribute that night to Pearl Washington. It can also be seen live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. That's a can't miss on Saturday. Absolutely. I remember growing up, rushing to the television set, watching... The greats of Syracuse, Billy Owens, Derek Coleman, Sherman Douglas. And then the towering front line, obviously, Alonzo Mourning, Dikembe Mutombo of Georgetown. A great series, and I'm glad those teams have kept it alive with Syracuse now in the ACC. At Georgetown beating Syracuse last year in their matchup in Washington. They met five times for the Big East Championship. Well, they were both members of that conference, and Georgetown won four of them. Syracuse finally got them in 92. Seven times Georgetown was champion of the Big East, Syracuse 4. So they will renew that rivalry, and the Dome will be rocking. No doubt about it. Short little shot there for Riley. The Bulldogs are finding their groove offensively, attacking gaps, drawing the second defender. Nice pass from Stevens. Riley ready to catch and shoot. Elliott to Blossom game. Fumbled it for just a moment, but was able to get it over the edge of the rim. Bulldogs trying to work quickly at the other end. Riley again, and a timeout. Tigers. Brad Burnell, mass substitutions. Going five in, five out. Disappointing in the fact that the Tigers scored on an alley-oop pass, and even after a make, the Bulldogs are getting the ball out, rushing the ball down the floor. And again, we talk about the Tigers. They're better offensively, but Brad Arnell teams are built on their defense. Can't be happy giving up easy opportunities after a made basket. They have not turned the ball over yet in the first half. Nine assists on ten made field goals for Coach Brownell and the Tigers. With the fact this team is better, they shoot the ball better from distance, have more offensive-minded players, but he hangs his hat on being a great defensive team and giving up an easy transition basket after you caught a lob and finished is not something he's going to let fly. Tigers lost in the second round of the ACC tournament last year in Washington to Georgia Tech, 88-85 in overtime. After going 10-8 and eight in conference play, City Chate, tough to stop inside. Well, oh, just too big inside. He had Ed Stevens on him. But again, another make. Bulldogs rushing down the floor, unable to finish there. But City Chate is so much better from a season ago, doing a nice job understanding who he is, scoring in the paint for the Tigers. He's got six points so far this evening at Little John Coliseum. Tigers opened up. The refurbished Little John with a win against Georgia, their rival, that had beaten them handily last year. Long rebound taken by the Bulldogs and grabbed by Riley. Beat Georgia 74-64 in the first game of the season. It's a long range three off the heel of the rim by Ed Stevens. Tigers also have a win against Nebraska in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. That was right here at Little John. It's a foul against the Tigers. 
It's going to be Holmes. First on Holmes. Again, if you're South Carolina State, this is an 11 point ball game. You've given up easy opportunities in transition from your turnovers. You're shooting 50% from the field. You show up your defense a little bit, take care of the basketball. This could be an interesting ball game as we get closer to halftime. Wide open underneath, and the layup missed under there by Riley. Beautiful roll and replaced action with City Jate stuck in the ball screen. Riley unable to finish, tried to shoot it too quickly. Feeling Jate trying to recover. DeVoe looking for some help. Holmes will reset with the shot clock at 10. Trying to work off a Jate screen. Hudson launches the three. DeVoe trying to beat the clock, and he does it on the glass. Gabe DeVoe. I thought he got away with an over the back down there, but Gabe DeVoe, instant offense from the bench. And now his junior season giving you 12 points a game. A guy that can heat up in a hurry off the bench for the Tigers. First basket for DeVoe. Looked like Riley brought it up to shoot and then lost possession of the basketball. But again, that's a turnover. But the Tigers must take the ball out and now come down and run their offense against a set defense. And those at, at this point in the contest, those are okay. It's the live ball turnovers leading the easy opportunities that have doomed the Bulldogs here in the first half. This is the third of nine straight away games for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Jute was trying to assert himself underneath. Looks like he got tangled up there with Riley. Well, again, just understand who you are. City Jute showing improvement each season. Now he mans the paint. Landry Noko graduating a year ago. Murray Garvin having a chuckle over there by his bench. His team will be challenged in the non-conference schedule as they often do. He's probably chuckling, looking at his bench saying, what do you want my guys to do? Jate <laughs> outweighs them by about 50 pounds. From the left side and good. So Eves with another basket for the senior. I love the adjustment the Bulldogs have made to begin this game. A little laid back offensively. They've really turned up the pressure, attacking make or miss trying to get easy opportunities before this defense of the Tigers can get set. Holmes grabs the long rebound and a fresh shot clock. This is Ty Hudson. Holmes again with a rebound. Puts it up and good for Holmes. Avery Holmes sneaking in on the backside. No one boxed him out. Bulldogs doing a nice job on the first possession. Half to do the job contesting and getting rebounds and offensively Tom hasn't been the problem Mortimer stepping into a walk-in three you must get stops if you want to pull a big upset on the road nine points now for Mortimer all the way to the glass and it's Ty Hudson the sophomore rapid pace to this first half of action between the Bulldogs and the Tigers just over three minutes to go in the first half. Tom Wormy, Jason Capel, our outstanding production crew here in Clemson, South Carolina. Scott Spencer's going to bring it up. Now DeVoe could not shake his defender. Pass looked to be intended for Jete. Now Eves in transition, and he lays it in. It was actually a solid pass, but if you're Gabe DeVoe, you must understand and know who you're passing the ball to. City Jate on the drive was simply running to get position for a rebound. Wasn't expecting a good pass inside and leads to a breakaway layup for the Bulldogs. Tigers call timeout. Eaves into double figures with 10 points as we step aside for just a moment from Clemson. Garvin, the Bulldogs. Trailing by 10 with 2.41 to go in the first half to the Clemson Tigers. 19 wins on the season last year for Coach Garvin. Two years ago, the coach of the year in the MEAC, as Jason had mentioned. And this is a very smart South Carolina State team. They know the opposition. They know that Ty Hudson 
has not shot a lot of three-pointers this season, and they are reacting well on both ends of the court here in the first half. Well, Hudson played two minutes, took three three-point shots, and he's a non-shooter when you talk about scouting report responsibilities. And the Bulldogs, a very good team, accustomed to winning. Again, you talk about 19 wins for the year last year, 12 and 4 in the MEAC. A team that firmly has their sights set on a MEAC championship this season. Picked behind Howard in the preseason rankings. And you have guys like Eric Eves and Stevens, two proven scores. If you're Clemson, you don't want to give this team confidence heading into half. Understanding it could be a very tough 20 minutes to put them away. Bulldogs have won five MEAC tournament championships in their history. But not since 2003 have they been the champs of that league. Another miss. Tigers not afraid to shoot the three tonight. That'll bounce off the rim. And on the attempt by Rainer Powell and out of bounds. And it will stay with the Bulldogs. How about the Tigers, they've attempted 16 three-pointers in the first half. Well, in their last contest against Mercer, they made 13 shots from distance, but... It's about who's taking the shot. I believe the wrong guys are taking the shot at the wrong time within the offense for the Tigers in this game. And you're the bigger, stronger team. Get the ball inside. Take advantage of your size in the paint. Bulldogs are three of six from beyond 20 feet, nine inches away. Eves had to give it up. Shot clock is at seven. Here's Mortimer. Blossom game got a piece of it. Foul is against South Carolina State. And David Bottenberg, who has just come in for the Bulldogs. Bonus situation for the Tigers. Blossom game with 14 points. And another free throw made is sixth of the night. Our next ESPN NBA Wednesday doubleheader as Paul George and the Pacers in Miami to take on the Heat 7 p.m. Eastern. After that one's over, we'll head to San Antonio for the Celtics' only trip of the season to the Alamo City square off with Kawhi and the Spurs. Both games are also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. One of two from the line. Blossom game and 15 points. Eaves, <laughs> a contested jumper. Big time shot. Eric Gives the step back jumper, little fadeaway. His confidence is continuing to grow. And if you're Clemson again, you want to get that ball inside. Lots of game unable to finish. Dante Gratham misses on the putback. Tigers ball, new shot clock. Again, the defensive rebounding and the turnovers are things that are not allowing the Bulldogs to cut even more into this Tiger lead. Holmes tried to glide to the basket and he collided with Bottenberg who has picked up another quick personal foul for South Carolina State and now the double bonus situation for the Tigers. Well you can see the scouting report when Avery Holmes catches the basketball a blue jersey is running at him to contest to run him off that three-point line you want to funnel him into the traffic Bottenberg there just got caught in the wrong place unable to stop and Holmes, an excellent free throw shooter, steps to the line for two. 84% on the season for Avery Holmes. Senior from Salem, Oregon. Second year in the Clemson program after transferring from the University of San Francisco. Textbook free throws from Holmes. And Holmes has a big week ahead. A game here tonight and then Thursday. We're going to welcome that young man into the graduate family who graduates from right here at Little John Coliseum Thursday so we want to wish him a big congratulations on being a student athlete and getting the job done in the classroom as well thousand point scorer in his time with San Francisco and Clemson combined trying to defend this time just before the end of the clock for Greg Mortimer and Mortimer is having himself an excellent first half finding pockets to score the basketball. 11 points in the first half for Mortimer, and the Bulldogs get the ball back. 43.2 seconds to go. And it's a nine-point game. Bulldogs doing a nice job 
having patience within their offense and when they work the shot clock down to four or five seconds they're doing a nice job here to finish the half converting those baskets have an opportunity to cut into this Tiger lead heading into half. Jason, how about 52% shooting in the first half for South Carolina State? Mortimer and Eves combining for 23 points. Blossom game went up and got it in front of Buttenberg. Shot clock and game clock very close. Just tenths separating them. Blossom game. Kicked it out. Mitchell. Grantham went for the hammer follow. And that shot, if it had gone, would not have counted by Marquise Reed. So a flurry to finish, but no points. Blossom game leading the way with 15 points. Mortimer has 11 and E's 12 for South Carolina State. The Clemson Tigers 5-0 when leading at halftime. But the South Carolina State Bulldogs playing with confidence heading into half. It's away from the start of the second half. ACC College Basketball on ESPN. South Carolina State and the Clemson Tigers separated by nine points with the Tigers in front as we anticipate the second 20 minutes well. Little John Coliseum still has that shine and sparkle from over $60 million of renovations recently put into this facility, Jason. And what I like the most, so much history around the concourse. Greats like Eldon Campbell, Harold Jameson, Terrell McIntyre, Will Solomon. This, is, was a, this was a tough place to play before, an even tougher venue to visit now for the opposition. They won that first game against Georgia in the grand reopening, 74-64. And look at that, the nation's largest center-hung, curved video board. Not a place in this arena where you can't get a look at the massive video board above the court here at Little John Coliseum. Well, it's an excellent venue. There's not a bad seat in the house. Not only to look down on the court, but boards on either side. is <laughs> kind of like a mini Cowboy Stadium, if you will, Jerry's World. Tiger fans are going to enjoy this season in Little John Coliseum. Last year, they played their games in Greenville, South Carolina, at Bon Secours Wellness Arena. They've got their home back, and they have not lost this year. A little John Coliseum 5-0, but they will have to work against Coach Garvin's team in the second half to keep that record unblemished. Well, again, it's a team that's shooting 50% from the floor in the first half. It's their possession. Bulldogs must do a better job taking care of the basketball. You don't want to give the Tigers extra possessions as you did in half number one. We're in for an exciting 20 minutes of play. Mortimer and Eves both in double figures in scoring. Several players with two rebounds leading the way for the Bulldogs as they turn it over on their first possession. And that's what you want it to not allow happen. Eight turnovers now for the game. Live ball turnovers. The Tigers having a bit of a job taking care of the ball themselves. Retain possession. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Tigers have attempted 17 three-pointers. They attempted 28 Saturday against Mercer to tie a season high and connected on 13 of those against the Bears to win 90-47. Out of the corner, Holmes! That's a three! But there's a difference there. Mitchell attacked off the bounce, drew that second defender. Holmes did a nice job relocating to the corner, and that's when you're taking good three-point shots. Nice way to start the half for the Tigers. Into double figures for Holmes, now two of five from three-point range. Eves just inside the free-throw line, halfway down and out to Jete. Two stops in a row for the Tigers. Must come down and execute offensively, and I'd love to see him get the ball inside. Nice draw and dish, baseline drive, baseline drift, and as the Tigers did in the first half, commanding the backboard. 14 offensive rebounds now for the Tigers. Make it 15. Yeah, tapped it out to Blossom game. 
14 offensive rebounds for the Tigers, although they have missed 25 shots. Knocked away from Blossom game by Kynard. Stays with the Tigers, 13 to shoot. South Carolina State falling back in a short shot clock to a 2-3 zone. Must locate the shooters and more importantly, five guys boxing out securing a possible rebound. Mitchell trying to beat the clock and he scoops it up and in. What you can't do in the zone is allow a guy to drive from one side of the floor all the way to the other. Understanding Shelton Mitchell is a left-hander that loves to go left. Nice scoop finish in the paint. Seven points for Mitchell, just one below his season average of eight per game. Eves, Stevens, Kiner, and a new shot clock. Trying to challenge Jete. Got him in the air. And Kiner gets the basket. Strong move from the freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Great patience inside, but it, on a make. Tigers rush the ball up the court. Dante Grantham, strong move inside. Seven points for Grantham. We race back to the other end of the court, and that one's good for Eves. And as we saw throughout the first half, the Bulldogs on a make. They're going to race the ball up the floor. Eric Eves, one of the best guards in the MEAC, putting it on display here in Little John Coliseum. He's got 14 points, 6 of 8 from the floor. Grantham pumps up the jumper. Blossom game, battling on the boards up and in. As he got it by Connor. You can play as hard as you want to, but you have to recognize a supreme athlete when he's on the floor. And that young man goes by the name of Jerron Blossom game. Too big, too strong. He can go to 12 feet where most can only go to nine. 17 points now for Blossom game. Five of eight from the floor. Shot clock at 10 for the Bulldogs. Little backdoor action. Nice ball fake there by Mortimer. Doing a nice job having Blossom game lead and then Riley cut to the hoop. Pass deflected out of bounds by the Bulldogs. It will stay Tiger basketball up 51-39 after leading by nine at halftime. Blossom game leads everybody with his 17 points. Holmes steps into a three. Jute kept it alive. Ease taps it to his teammate Mortimer. Gets it right back. Trying to challenge Holmes as the ball bounces out of bounds and to the Tigers. Trying to go a bit too fast there. I don't think he's ever had full control of that basketball. But again, a turnover that Coach Garvin can live with. The Tigers must take the ball out and now go against a set defense. A little 1-2-2 two, two token pressure falling back into that 2-3 zone. Gabe DeVoe has come into the game for the Tigers, number 10 in white. Holmes out of that hot corner, not this time. And now Eves trying to get it by DeVoe, and he puts it up on the cylinder and scores. We've seen this guy score in a variety of ways, knocking down shots from distance, beating you off the bounce. But there he took us to Europe with a nice little Euro step. <laughs> Kiss off the glass. Eric Eves, leading scorer on the team, over 14 points per game. Tonight, Eves now with 16 points. And he's 7 of 9 from the floor. Impressive performance from Eves. DeVoe had a steam in the floater. We have non-stop action. A lot of offensive possessions and a lot of offensive efficiency. Would love to see both sides lock down and sit down and play a little better defense. Lob pass. DeVoe able to knock it away. Great recognition from the junior guard. Shows you how well conditioned these athletes are. As Mitchell goes to the glass and lays it in. Shelton Mitchell with a bucket. Great in and out dribble. And again, that's a scouting report play there. Shelton Mitchell left handed, able to get to the hole, but Mortimer showing you he can go left as well. Attacking the basket, kiss off the glass, 13 points. Blossom game, his second three of the game as he steps in and connects. For a guy who came into this contest 
three for 25 from three. He's shooting it with confidence, 20 points in this contest. Third time this season, Blossom game has gotten to 20 points or more for the Clemson Tigers. Stevens trying to direct some traffic. The shot clock dips inside of 10. DeVoe's all over him. That's a three-pointer from Riley. Bulldogs in danger territory here. 15-point game. The Tigers are getting into a nice little flow offensively. Shelton Mitchell doing what he does. Nice pass inside. City J.J. unable to finish. Corrals his own rebound. Largest lead of the game. Definite danger to territory on the road for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. How about Jete now? Eight points and ten rebounds. Eves ran into a roadblock. Mortimer does not get the bounce. Tapped up and in to Shambay Riley. And a timeout on the court. South Carolina State calls timeout. Tigers with a 15 point lead. Timeout, Bulldogs from Clemson, South Carolina. Increasing their nine point lead, 60 to 45, against the visiting Bulldogs from South Carolina State. So many talented players across the nation, but you classify these four guys, Jason, as the top four undersized power forwards, two from the ACC. Well, in a time when the game is getting smaller, versatility is at a premium, and you look at these four, they exemplify what the game is going to. Bonzi Colson, one of the best offensive rebounders in the country, averaging a double-double. Deontay Burton, the Marquette transfer, doing an excellent job for Iowa State, attacking off the bounce, you can hit that athleticism. Miles Bridge is simply one of the best freshmen in all of college basketball, and you can't say enough about Jerron Blossom game, a guy that does a little bit of everything on both sides of the ball. He scores it, he can defend five positions on the floor, and now in this contest, two for two from distance, an all-around great player, and the game is getting smaller. You must have versatility. Guys that can play different positions and more importantly, guard different positions. Blossom game came into today shooting 69% from the line. Six of eight for Blossom game and 20 points to lead all scorers. Avery Holmes also in double figures for the Tigers. He's got 10. DeVoe, three point basket. Out of the timeout, Bulldogs show a little pressure defense. Tigers handle it flawlessly. The extra pass to Gabe DeVoe, and again, he's a guy that can heat up quickly. An excellent score off the bench for the Tigers. Seven for 25 from three-point range for the Tigers. Bulldogs come back with Richardson. Bulldogs remaining in a 2-3 zone. A lot of communication from the sideline letting you know who the shooters are. Reed, a nice drive to the basket. A cutting blossom game, unable to corral. Number 11, Janiah Baker Powell. So there is a timeout on the court. 63-47, Tigers lead. Trailblazers, stay tuned for Sports Center at night with Neil Everett and Nicole Briscoe. They'll have all the NBA, NHL, and college basketball highlights, NFL news, and everything else from your Tuesday. Sports Center at night after the NBA on ESPN. Also streaming live with the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Two of the best point guards in the AC in the NBA going head to head there. Russell Westbrook, Damian Lillard. And in this contest, it's all about. Shooting a hot basketball here in the second half. South Carolina State 64%, Clemson 60. I think the defensive prowess needs to be stepped up a bit. 12-6 run from the Clemson Tigers here to start the second half. Tigers will next be in action on Sunday when they travel to Birmingham to take on Alabama out of the SEC. Then after that, December 21st is a Wednesday. They travel to Columbia, South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks, who lost their first game of the season yesterday against Seton Hall on the road. 
Still nine and one though for Frank Martin. Another short little shot there and a basket from Riley. Second chance opportunities. Bulldogs taking full advantage, but must get back in transition. Easy shot missed by Gabe DeVoe. Deshaun Bay Riley has 10 points. That's right on his average for the season. He's going to try to add to it, and he will, using the square very nicely and calculating those physics. Doing a nice job inside the high extension on the jump shot. 6-0 run from the Bulldogs. Down 12 with 11 to go. 12 points for Riley. Grantham tried to set a screen. Mitchell straight away for three, and it's all net. If you're South Carolina State, you must give up something. Understanding that Boston Game had a guy on his back, two feet in the paint. Nice recognition to kick out, and Shelton Mitchell, an improved three-point shooter, knocked that one down with confidence. His second three of the game and 12 points for Shelton Mitchell. Mitchell. Mitchell missed the first four games of the year. Tigers 2-2 two and two in that span, and having him back running the show, definitely an added bonus for a team in need of a point guard. Richardson, as the shot clock was running down, it is a violation against the Bulldogs. Teams will head to their respective benches. 66-51, the Tigers lead midway through the second half. John Coliseum. Those upcoming ACC games, they get it started December 31st at Wake Forest. Wake Forest up front. John Collins, one of the most improved players now in his sophomore season, the double double machine. And we've seen North Carolina, how good they are and how good they can be getting a healthy Joel Berry back. And Notre Dame suffering their first loss to defending champion Villanova. Mike Bray once again has an excellent ball club in the Irish. North Carolina has to play Kentucky this Saturday in Las Vegas. Blossom game does not get the bounce. Grantham flying in for the follow. Well, Grantham hasn't shot the ball well in this game. Doing a little bit extra there. And easy basket leads to a turnover. Clemson showing a little full court pressure. Mitchell secures the ball and gave the vote. Nice finish in the paint. Tigers are working on a four-game winning streak, all of them coming here at Little John Coliseum. Blossom game defended, but there was contact. Eric Eves has been in the attack mode throughout this game, and that is the first foul of this second half, and Clemson, as a team, does a nice job. Second fewest fouls per game in the country at just 14. Doing a nice job defending without fouling, but I believe Brad Burnell would love his team to be a little more aggressive defensively and do a better job moving their feet and locking down on that end of the floor. Saturday on ESPN, Old Big East rivals square off at the Carrier Dome. George Todd at Syracuse at noon Eastern. It's a Holiday Hoops matchup presented by Zales. Going old school on Saturday. Georgetown beating Syracuse in their meeting last year. St. John's also on the schedule for the Orange. Rekindling those old Big East rivalries. That one is also at the Dome. A couple games later. Plus some game. And Grantham, they were both there. And it was Grantham leaping above his teammate to hammer it. Well, Grantham missed one in that same fashion. To end the first half there, he makes sure with the exclamation point with the jam. Tiger basketball, Grantham now with 11 points. Long shots lead to long rebounds, and when you don't box out in the zone, you leave yourself open to be on someone's poster. 
And Dante Grantham from the weak side catches a body inside. I like the expression from Blossom Game. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> he didn't want the, to be the guy in the, the poster. The roof is falling in as Grantham comes out of the sky to hammer that ball through the rim. Four Tigers are in double figures. That includes Grantham and Blossom Game. Also Holmes and Mitchell. Blossom game. Went up for the fake by Fields. The missed shot. And now Blossom game. The kick to Holmes. And there was a whistle prior to the shot. First on Eves. Foul prior to the shot. That right there is an example of what makes Blossom game so valuable. To take a rebound, push it left of the floor. Cre creating so much pressure on the defense. Holmes unable to knock down a jump shot and down 20. The Bulldogs take possession. Blossom game with 20 points, seven rebounds, and two of three on three point field goal attempts. Eves is your leading scorer for South Carolina State. He's got 17 activity right in front of our broadcast position. Luckily, I got Jason Capel <laughs> to make sure that I stay safe here I'll at the Little John Coliseum. No worries. <laughs> Jason, a standout of North Carolina in the late 90s, early 2000s. Final four in 2000 and the head coach at Appalachian State for five seasons. Eves knocking down the three ball. And he blows his hand because he's been on fire throughout this game. 20 big points. Coming off a game on the road against Texas A&M where he pumped in 23. This kid is unafraid and the MEAC competition better beware. Blossom game over Kynard. 22 now for Blossom game, Jason. Jerron Blossom game came in second as far as preseason voting. The player of the year behind Grayson Allen, but... I think Mr. Blossom game is going to have something to say for that. An all-around player putting up nice numbers for the Tigers. Eves forcing his way to the bucket. It was tapped up and in, but offensive goaltending as Riley got up on the rim on the shot attempt by Eves. Things are going right for the Tigers here in this second half. Even shots they miss. Dante Grantham throws them down. Too much sauce. Well, it's going to be a sensational season in the ACC, but back in the day, well, the late 90s, early 2000s, look at this guy. That's a technical foul, Jason Gable. And I didn't get called for a tag. <laughs> that was a game at home against Maryland, and I'm not sure how I did not get whistled for a technical foul in that play because I hung up there for some time. <laughs> a ride all the way to the Final Four in 2000. A lot of possibilities as far as Final Four candidates in this list here in the ACC standings. With so much depth within the ACC, in my opinion, by far the best league in all of college basketball. You look at the ranked teams there, Florida State climbing their way into the top 25. Big win over Florida. Dwayne Bacon, this fabulous sophomore, 23 points in that contest, and Louisville the size up front. Mike Bray each year has Notre Dame retooled with different faces, but they play at such a frantic place offensively. And Virginia Tech is a sleeper. Picked 10th in the preseason rankings of the ACC, but Buzz Williams has a team coming off 20 wins a year ago, 10 within the ACC. They're older, they're tough, and their style of play travels if they, as they play hard night in and night out. We saw Virginia Tech win a hard-fought ball game on Sunday against Ole Miss, and even Boston College on that list with a win against Auburn yesterday and a last-second tip-in at County Forum to win that game by one against the Tigers. No easy wins within the ACC this season. You must protect your home floor if you're the opposition. That's a wide-open layup inside. Marquise Reed has the basket and his first of the game. Back screen leads to an easy opportunity inside for the Tigers. North Carolina, the defending champs at the ACC tournament. 
beat Virginia last year in that title game. This year to the Barclays Center for the first of two straight tournaments in Brooklyn, New York for the ACC. Shot clock all the way down to three. They will not get it away. Well, Coach Garvin's team had cut the lead to nine at halftime. But the Tigers, I'm sure, got some inspired words from their head coach, Brad Brownell. And they've extended that lead here in the second half, Jason. The Tigers have played with more of a sense of urgency here in the second half. South Carolina State, as you said, down nine at halftime. But first possession as they had possession of the basketball to begin the half. They turned it over and the floodgates have opened from there. Tigers shooting a hot basketball here in this second half. Grantham slashing to the basket. Too strong. Dante Grantham, another one of those Swiss Army knives, a guy that does a little of everything. Great side to the wing position. Drops that inside shoulder, the attack off the bounce. Able to finish over a smaller defender. 13 points now for Grantham, who had 19 on Saturday in the win against Mercer to lead the Tigers. A blossom game hit the deck on the drive. And those are the plays Brad Barnell wants to see. The bench off their feet on the drive. City Jute beat off the bounce, but the senior leader, Deron Blossom game. We talk about it limp, what he's done offensively, but equally adept at being an excellent defender. We know he can block shots, but there is a secondary defender. Steps in, gives up his body, takes that charge. Outside of the restricted area. We approach the six-minute threshold. Jate's pass was deflected. Collected by Blossom Game. The soft touch. Jaron Blossom Game. He's got 24 as Eves has to give it up. Riley rattles out to Jate. Jate with 11 rebounds now. One more basket from the field, and he'll have a double-double. This time it'll be a driving Marquise Reed. And Jate cleared the way for Reed to take it all the way to the rack. Well, this score isn't indicative of the team that South Carolina State's going to be when they step into MEAC play. Nice job in the first half, fighting back. Nine-point game at the half. The Tigers coming out with a new energy in the second. Marquise Reed attacking off the bounce. Nice scoop and finish. 10-2 run here in the second half. And this is a much improved offensive team that Brad Barnell has this season. But again, the Tigers have to hang their hat on being a stout defensive team controlling the backboard. And moving forward, as the play gets tougher, they're going to have to be better on the, that end of the floor. The run right now for the Tigers is 19-4 to, to pull away from the Bulldogs from South Carolina State. Out of the MEAC, where they played in the title game last year in that conference in their postseason tournament. They certainly will be contenders in the MEAC this season. Tonight, though, they've run up against a Clemson team that is making very quick strides in this early season as far as improvement is concerned. The best example, number 50. Big number 50 for the Tigers. What's well, a team that's only going to get better? Sunday, Texas A&M transfer Elijah Thomas, a former top 50 player in the country, gains his eligibility in a 6'9 player inside, able to score in the paint, can protect the rim. For a team that's seen the improvement of City today to add another guy to that mix, the Tigers are only going to get better as this season progresses. Four and a half minutes to go in regulation. Holmes. Rainer Powell. Eves. Should say the rebound.
Blossom game is there. Twenty-six points, nine of fifteen from the floor at the other end. It's Riley. A nice draw and dish inside. Bulldogs are squarely out of this contest, but continue to attack, continue to play hard. Live to fight another day to Tommy Riley. Nice finish with the jam. Chate is just two rebounds short of his career high of 15, which he set against High Point this year. That one knocked away. Blossom game. Trying to avoid his teammate on the deck, Marquise Reed. Raider Powell picks up the foul when we come back. Blossom game is at the free throw line for the Clemson Tigers. Well, that's Elijah Thomas, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas, who is expected to be eligible for the Tigers come Saturday. He's a transfer from Texas A&M. Well, he's a top 50 player out of high school, transferred in December of last year from Texas A&M. The Tigers are counting on his size, his length, athleticism inside. A guy that can score it. You can throw it to him in the post, and he knows how to deliver. And with the development of City Jate, and you couple that with Elijah Thomas, his ability, you're adding depth to that front line, and he can give you a scoring punch and another long, able defender to protect that rim. Hard to believe he's the first Clemson player from the state of Texas. So there's a very good chance he will be in uniform for the game Saturday when the Tigers will take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Interesting that the Tigers and the Tide could meet on a different field in a few weeks if they can both survive their semifinals in the college football playoff. And that would be a rematch from last year where Alabama beat the Tigers who are the two-time ACC championship game title winners as they beat Virginia Tech this year. Well, one of the best national championships in football last year, Deshaun Watson putting on an absolute show. I'm sure he'd love to have another crack at the Crimson Tide this year. Deshaun and his teammates watching the basketball players tonight put on a little bit of a show against South Carolina State, which made it close at halftime, just a nine-point game. As that one goes out of bounds to the Tigers. Well, again, this is a South Carolina State team picked second in the MEAC behind Howard, followed by Hampton and North Carolina Central. Those four teams are all capable of winning the league, and so many great players and excellent coaches should be an exciting year in the MEAC this season. Knocked away. Riley got a piece of it. He's challenged by Roberton. In transition. Reed the layup and he got fouled. Marquise Reed will go to the free throw line. Richardson. First personal. At the line to shoot two. Marquise Reed. Saw that legend Roberton is into the game for the Tigers, the junior from London, England, with Reed at the free throw line. Our next ESPN NBA Wednesday doubleheader has Paul George of the Pacers in Miami to take on the Heat at 7 p.m. Eastern. After that one's over, we head to San Antonio for the Celtics' only trip of the season to the Alamo City to square off against Kawhi and the Spurs. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You talk about legend Roberton, a guy giving depth up front last two games, eight blocks, five points against Davidson. So just adding to the quality of the front line of the Tigers and the South Carolina State, Ed Stevens continues to play hard, knocks down a big three from distance. Across the lane, and that one will stay down for Scott Spencer. The freshman from Suffolk, Virginia, known as an excellent shooter. You see his athleticism. A guy that the Clemson Tigers, who do an excellent job developing players, 
to be added to that list of improving players as the season and his career progresses. There's a three from the top of the key from Ed Stevens. Ed Stevens shot that one from Anderson, South Carolina. His foot squarely in the, the toe of the ball. And another guy who, when this team turns the page and gets into the league play, you look at a backcourt of Eves and Stevens, they're going to be a handful in the MIAC. Both benches are starting to empty now with 1.38 to go. Eves is coming out of the game for South Carolina State. And he had 20 points to lead the way for the Bulldogs. With this one in hand for the Tigers, who will improve to 6-0 at home at Little John Coliseum with 1.30 to go. Roberton misses. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be South Carolina State basketball. Big performance tonight for the Tigers. 91 points. They scored 90, 85, and 90. One and counting in their last three games. And the one thing Brad Burnell is going to look at when this game ends is how well or how disappointed he is and how his team defended. He hangs his hat on being a stout defensive team. Tigers must improve in that category. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Clemson. Jerron Blossom game. What a night. 29 points and a couple of three-pointers and nine rebounds. One board shy of a double-double for Blossom. Boy, did it in a variety of ways. Highlight fashion. Catching lobs, knocking down three-point shots, showing his versatility on both sides of the basketball. Season high with those 29 points for Blossom game. South Carolina State basketball. He's also gone over 1,300 points for his Clemson Tiger career. Just four points shy of his career high for Jerron Blossom game tonight against South Carolina State. In a time where guys are leaving college as quickly as they can as freshmen, here's a guy who's a graduate, an excellent player, all ACC player, looking to lead his team to the tournament in his final season. And on the break, Scott Spencer. The dish, the catch and a big time jam to get the crowd on their feet. Great pass from Lyles Davis on the break for the Tigers to set up his teammate Scott Spencer. And now just 10 seconds to go. Final seconds from Little John Coliseum where the Clemson Tigers remain undefeated. Jason Capel at home this season with a 93-65 win, eight in a row against the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Well, they took care of their home floor when you talk about the Clemson Tigers. Jawan Blossom game just too much, too big, too strong and athletic inside. This is a team that scores the basketball at an efficient rate. But Brad Burnell, I'm sure, wants to see his team take the necessary steps to improve defensively, especially going on the road against a well-coached Alabama Christian Tide team in Avery Johnson. Four players for the Tigers got into double figures. Mitchell, blossom game with his 29 to lead everybody. Holmes and Grantham, City Jete had 13 rebounds to lead everybody. Once again, the Tigers take out the Bulldogs for Jason Capel and our outstanding production crew. I'm Tom Wormy. Coming up next, it's College Football Live on ESPNU.